You got the car, man. We are going live tonight, brand new time, Tuesday night, and uh, welcome all to the channel. If you are new, please subscribe. We're going to be educational base type channel. Meanwhile, uh, tonight I got an interesting subject. I've been asked about this probably four, maybe five times in the last seven days. So I figure like maybe somebody's pretty interested in getting some classes or doing some ongoing education. So uh, we're going to talk about it. And, uh, you know, apparently there's a lot of places out there that uh, is going to attempt to solicit you, um, is going to attempt to solicit you to pay. Uh, they're going to give you a, teach you how to buy cars, how to be a successful car dealer, um, but just different segments in it, so forth and so on. So I've heard prices all the way the range from about 400 bucks to roughly 1500 and uh, I heard of a group out of Chicago charging 5000 a week. Now, what you got to understand is, is when you're in the car business, education isn't something you learn when someone's talking to you. It's something that you learn as you're doing it, each step at a time. And sometimes the shortcut is the long way. Actually, the, the shortcut is the long way. That, that, that is the, that's the shortest way to it is... Uh, is doing it the hard way. Uh, what's up, fellas? Jesus Lopez. Uh, or is that Jesus? Knowledge is power. Power is endless. Good evening, JJ. Hey, what's up, fellas? Um, just getting it going live tonight. So let's talk about this. Let's see what people can bring to the table. What can they actually teach you in the game of the car business? Well, what was interesting, one of you guys were talking about spending the $1,500 a week. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name now. Uh, tote the note or something he's going to do he's going to teach you how to do a uh, lot financing or uh buy here pay here Sue buy here pay here so all right so i kind of looked at the guy stuff a little bit and uh this was about four or five days ago and i can tell you right away just from watching how he presents the cars and stuff like that Probably works for him. He does have a lot of legit. Uh, he has a lot of legit things he says. You know, he he's like, hey, don't bother cleaning them. Why bother? Um, why why bother cleaning them? Just you know, basically, you buy a piece of shit, you sell a piece of shit, collect your money. If they don't pay, screw it, go pick them up. All right, let's talk about that for a second. Okay, that concept does work. So we are not going to say that it does not work. That is a particular segment in the car business that will allow you to do it just like that. You do not need any formal training whatsoever to do it. Um, he And then one of them goes so far as to say, hey, I don't even bother about references and this and that and other thing. Okay, so, all right. So if you want to learn, buy here, pay here, you certainly don't have to spend $1,500 a week to do it. Maybe you need the confidence builder or whatever. So buy here is, re here is real simple. If you have the money to keep sending cars out and hoping something somebody keeps paying you, then you can succeed in buy here, pay here. That's the end of the line with that. However, what you really got to be good at in buy here, pay here is reprioritizing yourself to be the highest person getting paid on the game. Period. End of story. If that person has to prioritize you first before the power bill, before the rent, before the baby's dad, whoever... For whoever gets involved, you are number one. How do you do that? We've talked about this before. You put automatic shutoffs on your car and you GPS some suckers. So when the when the car doesn't when the car isn't paid for Friday at five o'clock when the payments due, uh, it's got a timer in it. Automatically shuts it down. The only way they can start it back up is with the new payment code. Period. End of story. Wish you could. Computer won't let you do nothing about it. Um, and that's all there is to it. Now, that same person that you're going to reprioritize, you need to bring them some kind of value. And buying cars that have uh, little transmission issues, quote unquote, um, little this and little that, don't care if the power windows work, don't care if that works, just basically want to get a car to put a number on the board. Okay, guys, that's not going to work for longevity because for every bad deal you do, for every one person you talk to that's a bad deal, it's going to come back to you 50 to 100 times. So that one person has the ability to affect up to 100 people and then the people they do. After that, it saturates and not people care. But the first 100 will cost you business. So if you're going to be in business long term, you've got to buy a little higher quality vehicle. 
I'm not saying it has to be cosmetically perfect, but you do have to put a car. You have to put a car out that's safe for an individual that their family can depend on. Just because they have bad credit and just because they're in a position of vulnerability doesn't give you the right to extort them under any condition. It's not right. It's not. Uh, it's it's not just not the right thing to do. If you're going to put somebody in a car, I'm not saying it's got to be pretty, but it does have to be safe. Uh, you need to make sure your windows are working, the HVAC system, all that. Or if they don't care, maybe it's a work truck and maybe not have AC. But you know what I mean. Make it a safe, sound vehicle. And give that guy, instead of taking advantage of him that's down on his luck, give him a shot at having something decent. So put him in a decent car, you know, and that guy's going to pay you. He's going to look out for you just like you looked out for him. What happens is if you're in the in the mindset Hey, you know what? F them. You know what, man? It's just numbers. They're they're a million to one. There's bad credit everywhere. We'll just take advantage of them any way we can. It doesn't really matter. Well, that's not true. You're in a limited market. It's going to saturate out. And within six months to 12 months, maybe two years, your name's going to be shit and you're out of business. You'll survive with the cockroaches. That's all there is to it. You will not, um, you won't, uh, you won't blossom. Your business won't grow into something better. And you basically have no future in the car business. You are going to be at best a bottom end feeder your entire time in the car business. Period. Can you survive? Maybe. Well, is your market big enough to handle you? Maybe. Chances? Not real good. So I wouldn't pay $1,500 a week to learn that. But I'm going to tell you what, guys. If you really want to do it, just, just, just slow down for a minute. Set your goal, you know, start small. You don't have to start real big. Everybody's going to learn how to buy cars their own way. Not everybody, you're not going to be able to walk in and buy a car with 30 years experience because you don't have it. But you will get it. Each time you go to the auction, you watch what the guy's looking at. You look at it. You know, watch some of my self-help stuff. There's plenty of people on the internet that will help you look at different things on cars. Start getting comfortable. Start driving them. This is how you become a better car buyer. A better car buyer brings you a better customer. A better customer brings you referrals. A happy customer brings you more referrals. This just It just goes bigger. So when you do good things, it expands. You cannot start your business based on the fact that I'm just going to extort everyone I run across. If you do, you're doomed to fail right off the bat. You got to provide a good product, whether it's a thousand dollar car or whether it's a fifteen thousand dollar car. Doesn't matter. Same principles apply. That's why the franchises stay in business because they take care of their stuff. I mean, if there's something wrong, they take care of it. If a customer comes in, they take care of it. And if they know they've got junk, they wholesale it. They don't even put a customer at risk because they know. That reputation is only this big. And when you get outside that market and you've saturated, you either have to move or quit. You're done. You will stop selling cars. People will not show up. Everybody that's going to be in your market has either been there or they've told someone else about how much you suck. And that's just going to be the end of it. Now, consulting as far as taking a course on how to buy cars in the niches. Like, uh, let's say you wanted to get into... Um, let's say you want to get into doing cars at uh, specifics, like you. Hey, I want to, I want to specialize in flipping six to ten thousand dollar cars, and this individual is going to say, "All right, I'm going to teach you how to strictly buy cars and sell cars for cash, so you can make a profit, and this is how you do it." And they drill it down, drill it down, drill it down. Well, the mechanics are easy enough. There's only X amount of steps inside the car buying. Um. Okay, let's start right here. Uh, Wave, Rick Dyer. Yeah, that's the guy's name. Rick. I don't know if I'm saying it right, Rick Dyer. A clean vehicle, sellable vehicle. Uh, in my area, got a dresser well, dresser to kill. Better yet, sell at a profit. Yes, I like Jesus. Hello from the desert, Air, the Arizona desert, 115 today. Holy sh! You got to have morals in this business. You got to have a little bit of morals. I mean, you got to do the right thing. I mean, it's not all about profit. I mean, this is sustainability. You can read any business model out there, and the first thing they're going to teach you is to teach your, treat your customer correctly. No one's going to start out in a successful business model and say, all right, we're going to have to extort everybody we meet. And the customer is not really, they're just something we're going to utilize to build our own. No, you're a dumbass. You're not going to make it. I'm sorry. You will. I'm not. You will be able to sell cars. Uh, you will be able to get some type of success off of that for a short period. In that case, if that's all you're in it for. More power to you. If you want longevity 
and to make it to the end line, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to adhere to a certain code that says you're gonna at least try to do the right thing. Stuff happens, cars break down, whatever. It ain't always your fault. You don't always have to take responsibility. But generally speaking, in the beginning, you need to swing as hard as you can to put the best effort out possible, no matter what market you're dealing in. Anyway, it just I was like not very impressed that that was your business. Not very impressed as a business model. Even less impressed that he would think someone would pay fifteen hundred dollars to actually learn that. But whatever. If it works for him, more power to you, brother. And if you can sell a million cars a month like that, maybe we don't know. But I'm telling y'all, the rest of the people in different markets that you need to take care of your customer. They're not something you extort. They're a prized possession. You're only going to have. A handful of them a month as an independent. So you take care of everyone you can get and you treat them right. And guess what? They're going to treat you right. That's how it's going to work. All right. So let's go into $400 for my course, $800 for my course. I'm going to teach you how to get rich in the car business. Okay. All right. Well, once again, we're going to have to tackle that one another way. There's mechanics to, hey, Go to the auction, buy cheap, sell high. Those are mechanical things. Um, hey, go buy uh, buy imports and sell them in a high demand import area, and you'll make good money. No shit, we already know that. So, the mechanics of this is for sale. People will teach you a little course and say, okay, A do this, B do that, C do the, you know on down the list, and you go through this mechanical course of you know all these do's and don'ts. At the end of the day, I would not waste my time or my money. And I'm going to tell you why. Each time you go out and play ball, you're going to learn a different lesson. And even if the guy, the little squeak, told you that on the on your little videos, he's, uh, he's going to put you to sleep while you're talking. And you're going to be, when you're out buying, it's a drilling rush, baby. You got to, you mean, you're under the gun. You got to jump. I mean, you might make five grand in the next five seconds if you can only make the right decision. Or you could lose five grand if you only make the wrong decision. You ain't got time for people's bullshit. Like, it's like, don't give me your impression of how to make money. Go out and just do it. Go out and get your feet wet. Go ahead and make your just go ahead and freak out when you're sitting there trying to buy the right car. You gotta feel it. You gotta have the pain. You gotta have the excitement. You gotta do it all. That's the only way you really learn. Paying somebody isn't gonna get you shit. I mean, for all that goes, you can consult with me anytime. You can say, hey, is this a good idea or a bad idea? And even I, I will not sit here and tell you I know the answers to everything. I can just give you a pretty good scope based on what I've personally experienced, which has been a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, so I wouldn't be extorted by it. To me, these people are selling courses to get rich. They say, if you ever want a salesman to stop selling, all you got to do is make them a manager. And um, so people that can't sell cars, they promote them to management. And that's true. I've seen that happen a million times. I can't tell you how many desk guys I've had that couldn't sell shit. They couldn't sell a hot cup of coffee to an Eskimo. And they just couldn't do it. I mean, they were worthless. And uh, now they could pencil a deal and they could follow the mechanics of it and they could push the salespeople, which is why they're sales managers. But as far as getting out, hey, Mr. Customer, I'm your new best friend. Let's rock and roll, baby. We and you, the kids, we're going to tickle them. We're going to have, we're going to laugh with the wife. We're going to go out. We're going to be best friends. You giving me all your money and you're going to leave tonight. They ain't that guy. Hey, what's up, Big Cliffy? Uh, so why do some auctions require you to have dealer's license? Ah, that's simple because it's a financial thing. Um, dealers are much easier to deal with because they they buy multiple cars. They're financially responsible. You know, they're going to have floor plans or and they're also bonded to the auction. Doesn't have to do all the little stuff in the middle. So it's just easier for them to sell huge numbers of cars to a small group of people than it is to them to try to deal with every Joe Blow Johnny on the map would just be too cumbersome to try to do some company like Mannheims, they just wouldn't have time for it um all right not to be too random but yeah that's my feeling on this guys I'm, I'm thinking go out and get your feet wet i mean stop worrying about taking a course if you want to go out go buy you a car take a shot at it see if you do good watch that bitch up and put it for sale i mean to see what you can do um, you know, and when you're ready to get your lot, just, you know, just go ahead and find you a good location, you know, find cheap. That's a good, safe place to start. Cheap. 
That's your first free lesson tonight. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Everything's got to be cheap. The location's got to be cheap. You're going to be cheap. Your cars are going to be cheap. And at the end of the day, your deals are going to be cheap. You're going to give the best deal out there because you're just getting started. So that's your first thing. I'm going to just, you know, start cheap and, you know, buy low and sell high, baby. That's the name of the game. All the stuff in the middle that people get wrapped up on, all the steps. I mean, you, you got to follow them. I mean, you'll have to learn how to buy cars. You're going to have to learn how to deal with their certain things, finance companies and salespeople and, you know, the whole infrastructure, the whole thing. But let's face it. Most people on YouTube that are looking, trying to buy a car or trying to figure out how to do this, they ain't got, they ain't, they don't have a dealership structure. They ain't never had it. They never going to really have it. So they're just, or if they do, they're independent and they're basically just making a living for them and their family. And they're not really worried about building a huge mega business. Oh, that's good to have him. So what's up everybody? Anybody got any questions on this? You're getting ready to hire some uh, professionals to help you do some business? I guess not. I guess all y'all are already educated. <laughs> Okay, are some of the public auto auctions rigged? Seems like some of the bidders are there just to raise a price. Yes! Dude, I've been in auctions in Orlando, the Orange County Auto Auction. I don't know if the guy still works there or not, but he, for real, for real, I swear to God, I know I was the only guy in the lane. I know I was. And when I hit the car, I hit it at 5,500. Never forget this. So he's like, he's like 55, 55, 58, 58, 58. And then he jumps. He's like, oh, got one, 60, 61, 62, 63. This fucker, I'm sorry, this guy ran this thing up. Uh, didn't use that last word. Uh, didn't use that last word. Um, but anyway, long story short, so the guy, uh, he, he turns around and starts running me up against a trash can. So, yeah, there is definitely such thing as a rigged, uh, there is definitely a rigged uh, a situation where, Auctioneers, this is just part of your education. That's why you got to sit there and be there personally. Auctioneers will run it up your butt. How does auctioneers get paid? At the end of the day, they don't make nothing for the cars they represent. They only make something for the cars they sell. And they don't make a lot. Um, they can if they're a good, a good auctioneer. I mean, good auctioneers can make some heavy bank on sale day because they sell lots and lots of cars. But doesn't mean that they're they're that they're just car salesmen if you would think of it like that they're nothing different than you and i except they're they have a, a set audience and their idea is to try to hook people on cars and and then stick them make them stick with it so that's how they get paid so now you can't trust an auctioneer you can't trust nobody at the auction everybody the auction is gonna stick in your ass you i mean you know arbitration same thing you i mean buy cars under green light because the other guys, they'll, they'll come up with a story. The seller will be like, hey, um, yeah, I'm just selling all these cars under red light because they're all wholesale, and I just don't want to deal with them, but they're all good cars. Right. Sure you are. So i um, <laughs> not saying you can't get a good car like that occasionally, but it happens where, guess what? They're actually lying. They are POSs, and you can't do nothing about it when you buy them under red lights. So... Um, you know, and then you got people that are like, if they're if you're like a small independent dealer and you have a small floor plan and you're trying to chase the float, that's what they call it when the titles aren't in, they'll put their cars up there and say the titles aren't in. You'll ask them, hey, how long is the title going to be there? And they'll be like, oh, it'll be there within two weeks, three weeks. And then as soon as the sale's over, they bring the title in and force you to pay. So you got to, you can't take anyone's word for nothing. Not saying some of them aren't honest like that, but... Some of them are not honest like that. Um, yeah, and so, uh, so all right, went to public auction. Some guys were walking around pulling fuses out of the cars. Oh, say it's not so. So things people do at the auction are crazy. Yeah, they'll pull fuses. I've seen them put water in the, in the uh, valve covers after they buy them. They'll take a bottle of water, put it in the valve cover, so it blows a bunch of steam out. And they'll tell, go tell the arbitrator that it's uh, it's a blown head gasket to get out of it. Um, I've seen that. I've seen them put duct tape, uh, electric tape over check engine lights. Because you're, as you're walking by and the car's going through, you don't see it till after you buy it and you're in the car and you pull and you're like, oh, okay, that was slick. I've seen them pull the uh, coil packs out a little further so the... Uh, the plugs burn a little hotter to, uh, you know, cover up a, uh, a miss from a uh, blown head gasket. People at the auction do some crazy, crazy stuff. 
And, uh, you know, can you doctor one up to run? Yeah. I mean, I've seen them pour the water out of, uh, take the water out so it doesn't, especially with blown head gaskets, they'll take the water out and leave the top off the uh, radiator or one of the hoses disconnected. So the car, if it's a really cold auction morning, you won't notice it until after you get home. I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Load the transmissions up with uh, just crap. I mean, there's so much crap. It just shuts it up. And the engines, too. And it's just crazy. I mean, but the thing is, is you got to go there and you got to experience it. Like, you got to learn it. I mean, auctions, cutting your teeth and doing it. This is why I preach the gospel of, hey, go buy from an individual. Does it take longer? Sometimes. But you're usually only buying four or five cars a week if you're small or two or three. So you got plenty of time to deal with individuals. And you don't have to pay the auction fees and you don't have to deal with all the shit that I'm talking about, which is a much better situation for you than um, going up there and, and having to play the auction game. The auction game's a tough game. Kids, you can't get burned in the auction game, but you can make some money. You can find a good deal. Um, you can catch a bank asleep at the wheel with you know something wrong with a car. You can take a shot on that car and make a shit ton of money. And it's just... Uh, yeah, once you made a decent profit, you always want to do more. Yeah, exactly. It's like a drug. You uh, you definitely want to get that drug, that love drug, which is called profit for us. Um, and long story short, there is uh, there's no there's no filling it. I mean, once you get used to making three grand on a car, uh, you're gonna start looking for cars you can make three grand on. You know, but right now as you're starting out, maybe you're trying to figure out how to make a thousand dollars on a car. And then after you make a thousand, you're gonna be like, oh well, I've done that so much, I can do fifteen hundred a car. And that's how the mentality starts. You can't, um, you can't, you can't really learn that other than learning to do it one car at a time. Went to public auction. Some guys were walking around pulling fuses. Of it. Okay, I worked on it. Okay, I used to work for Auto Salvage buying and towing cars. Worst car ever were the Cadillacs with the North Star engines. Hell yeah, they are some bad cars. They. Um, Easily fixed if you know what to do, but it's a lot of cumbersome work. The uh, blocks are aluminum, and you have to helicoil them blocks and um, tap new head bolts in it to make them stay. Uh, yeah, and my boss will put hydraulic fluid and transmissions to make them work for a few more test drives. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, I've seen them put white brake fluid on a car going through at night so it was shiny. And the next day, the, the paint was it was bad to start with, but it would just be past ruined. Um, anything that you can conceive that somebody can rig up to pass is going to happen. But guys, it's just like the guy was saying at the, the buy here, pay here. He's like, oh, I don't care. It's a piece of shit. And, you know, the next buyer and those same guys are going to be the guys at the auction going, I don't care. I just want to make $300, and guess what you're going to do the next time that guy's up there selling a car? Tell me, are you going to raise your hand and buy him, or you don't care what he's got? You ain't buying nothing, little asshole ripped you off, right? So, there you go. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Longevity? Yeah, maybe you do get me on one car deal at the auction. I take you for face value. I take a shot. You cost me $1,000, $1,500. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But guess what? For the next 10 years, when your butt's trying to survive... And I probably could buy one of your cars, maybe two or three of them, maybe five or six of them. Guess what? Go starve. You ain't worth it. Attrition's going to eat your ass alive. Karma will get you in this business. I promise you. Um, all right. So that's just kind of like my take on that. Auction is a fun place. I made a ton of money at the auction. I ain't gonna lie, but I don't really like it because I'm kind of greedy. And like uh, Buff was just saying, once you make a lot of money, you kind of want to keep making a lot of money. And so... If you do any volume at all, I mean, for me to give the auction another three grand a month, I'm not willing to. I like to keep it in my pocket, and maybe you do too. Maybe you don't. I don't know, but that's what I do. That's what the car man does. He keeps it in his pocket. I guess that makes me greedy. I am kind of greedy. <laughs> oh, by the way, man, yesterday I had to say goodbye to the F-150. Yep. Going through an intersection, boom, T-bone. It is total. Got hit by a 2018 Mazda. This car hit me so hard that my driver's side floorboard is actually uh, sticking up about eight inches. Like, it, it was a hard impact. Busted up my head and stuff, but shoulder can't move it a little bit. But they say it's just from the seatbelt. Other than that, good little hit. But, I mean, whatever. What do you hate and love most about the car business? Okay. 
Yeah, it was an ouch. It was an ouch for real. Uh, all right, let's see. So what do you hate about... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Is that Angel? Is that Angel, Angel? Hold on. We got to stop right here. Uh, no, got, glad you're safe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, blessed for sure. Actually, what did it say? Tuesday. It was actually Sunday, so my bad. But yeah, other than uh, other than a little bang up on the shoulder, life is good. All right, so Angel, is Angel's going to be, if y'all see her on here. Okay, yeah, she said yes. Okay, hold on, Angel. I'm trying to catch up. Alex, glad to see you're okay. Oh, else, yes. Okay, Angel saying yes. Angel, by the way, everybody say hi to Angel. She's going to be our new uh, person that does our graphics and design. She's going to be working with us on our ebook covers and um, the website stuff. She's going to be like the professional. Um, and she's done. I don't know if y'all are in the gaming or whatever, but what's the name of that game that you uh, you you design like virtual people and all that stuff? She does some crazy stuff out there. Um, but anyway, I can't think of the name of it, but she's like wicked, ridiculously good at graphic arts. So if anybody needs any graphic arts, her, uh, she's on here and she is available, I guess. I don't know how much you're available for, but, um, EverQuest. Okay. EverQuest. Okay, guys, let's go and give her some badass thumbs up. She's pretty cool on that kind of stuff. So we're going to have some pretty cool graphics. And now what this is important, and one of the reasons I'm bringing this up um on our on our t-shirts and stuff like that remember i was telling you about that last month well she's gonna be the one that does the graphic arts designs and uh our logo our logo is gonna be uh, uh a little skeleton guy who's always doing crazy shit but one of our first t-shirt is gonna be called the nutcracker which him hanging off of a lug wrench trying to break free on a tire so any ideas that you guys got, let's just bring them up. You can bring them up randomly at any point, and Angel will keep up with it. And she's like our going to be our designer, putting these T-shirts together. So we definitely want to do whatever you come up with. I think we're going to come up with some pretty funny stuff. I don't think the car business has a good representation for a cool shirt, so to say. I mean, of course, we like her. You know, her first car she told me about was um, she was like, oh, yeah. I was like, well, what kind of car are you in or whatever? And she's like, oh, yeah, my favorite car is a Shelby Mustang. I was like, what? A chick like, how does she, how she even know what a Shelby Mustang is? Okay, yeah, you got the, yeah, you're working for us. You good, you good. Everything's good right now. We all good. All right, um, anyway, I guess that's about it for tonight. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Wave hi, everyone. Awesome, cool, 1964 and a half. Oh, there you go. Make one of JJ as a bodybuilder. Yes. 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 Whoa. Hey, that's not funny. Y'all know I've been lifting weights just because I like to eat fried chicken. Does not mean y'all need to make little fat jokes because, you know, I do lift a lot of weight. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'll be in the gym tomorrow. Keep working it real. All right. JJ's the old fart. Hey, watch your big cliffy. Oh, by the way, uh, Angel, I cannot be responsible for anything that these guys say to you. You are on your own. I do apologize in advance because I know that they are going to say some messed up shit eventually. So we'll just let that go. But she's pretty tough. She can handle it. Or she'll make a character that represents you and put it in EverQuest. And then you'll live in infamy for the rest of your life. So she's badass like that. All right, guys. Uh, I guess that's it. Live from the RVA. I'm going to go nurse my shoulder back to life. And uh, we'll catch you next Tuesday night. And if you guys got any question, let me know. And please be thinking about the T-shirts, which I think is a killer idea. And I got an idea for the next show, but I'm not 100% sure on it. Uh, but I did want to cover this before any of my peeps are out throwing away their own hard-earned money to learn people stroking shit up there. I guarantee you any of these classes you're taking, when you get done with it, you're going to be like, why did I just waste my money? Um, but, you know, if you just feel like you got to, then go right ahead. But, I mean... I'm telling you, man, the only thing you're going to learn from that is that you need to go learn on your own. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Meanwhile, peace and love from the RVA. See you. Wait, got to find my cancellation. Hold on. I think it's this button.